Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here from theautomationschool.com. In today's podcast, we're going to talk about Factory Talk View Machine Edition version 10, specifically what's new with it, because it was just released last week. Now, you may have heard that it was released like three or four weeks ago, and it kind of was, and then it was quickly pulled back, or so the story goes, that uh, there was a bug in it, and uh, not that it would affect everybody, but Rockwell decided to pull it back put a patch in there and then release it again. So the release that came out last week was 10.00.01. And uh, here you can see I got the uh, release notes up and that's what we're going to go through today in the podcast. If you're listening, of course, I'll try to uh, explain everything we see here. But of course, if you're watching, you'll be able to see it yourself. And, you know, if you want to get a copy of these release notes for yourself, just go to ab.com, then go to product compatibility and search on factory talk view machine edition and you should find uh, under versions the release notes. So with that said, let's uh, have a look here. All right, and the first thing we can see, really no change on the requirements for View Studio Machine Edition. They're still saying it's an Intel Core 2 Duo at 2.66 gigahertz. That's a pretty you know standard machine. Actually, it's a pretty old spec, so you should have no problem running this unless you have a very old computer. Software requirements, you can still see Windows 7, 8, 8.1, and 10. Professional and Enterprise, and there's some others in there, Server 2008, 2012, and the new one would be uh, Server 2016. So that's pretty cool. And now they even list a list of supported browsers, Google Chrome, and an Explorer 11, and Mozilla Firefox. So that's cool. All right, so let's go down to the new features here. All right, the first thing you can see here is that they've added an onboard audit trail. So this is much like what you would have in View SE, where operators' actions can be audited and logged to record their actions. So you'll have these log files that you can go back through and say, all right, well, what did they do? How did we get in this situation? Now, they also added a CSV export of audit files, diagnostic and alarm history files. So that's cool. People have been asking. CSV is the standard for like just a pure text data dump. And it's great to see that finally make it into the product in version 10. And uh, very, very glad to have that there. You can configure the export settings at design time and export audit logs, alarm logs, and diagnostic information to CSV files at runtime. So very, very cool. Um, also, there's a dynamic local message and echo message feature. And this allows you to dynamically specify the local message file and write the triggered message to a string tag. That's also cool. There's also a new feature where you can record the steps you choose when you go to install the software, and then you can play those back to install the software the same exact way on other computers. So if you're deploying a lot of different computers, that can be very, very helpful. And then uh, they've modernized the customer experience when it comes to the help files, because now they're all in HTML. And so that's not a big deal. But you know, it includes native support for Windows, Mac, Linux, smartphones, etc. Now let's go down to enhanced features. So, so far, no earth-shattering new features, but there is one coming. So here it is. You now can open and convert earlier versions of runtimes. That's right. You can convert earlier versions of runtimes with Machine Edition version 10. There is no more constraint of opening and converting version 5, 5.1, or 6.0 applications on a 64-bit operating system. Now, if you remember previous to this, if you had a 5.0, 5.1, or 6.0 application, runtime application, um, you could not extract that, open that, turn that back into a project on a 64-bit operating system. You had to do it on a 32-bit operating system. I mean, the easiest way was just to install 6.1 on, you know, uh, Win 7 32-bit, and then they would automatically extract it and convert it to a 64-bit or to the new style of tag database. Now, that is gone. So you can get version 10, put it on your system, and open up all your uh, old projects. That's awesome. They've also added in the CSV data log tamper detection utility. So when you install version 10, you can get that as well. Um, and this is cool. You can auto dock the property panel and the object explorer. 
So this is automatically done for you, and it's automatically done to the right side of the main window. Very, very similar to what you would see in other programs, Connect Components Workbench, and other things. I haven't tried this yet. I'm looking forward to trying it. But uh, hopefully you can undock them still as well, because sometimes it's nice, especially if you're on multiple monitors, to have those, uh, those floating. Now, they also added an, or enhanced the ability to uninstall multiple components at the same time. Not a really big deal. And then um, with Kep Server, they're now supporting 5.21. They don't tell us what's new in 5.21, but they support it. So that's all the enhanced features. The big thing I'm seeing here, well, export the CSV files. That's great, right? And, um, you know, a minor thing being docking the property panel and object explorer to the right-hand side. But I think the big thing is that ability to open those old 32-bit applications on a 64-bit operating system. Um, that is really cool. Besides that, not a whole heck of a lot here for the average user, not in View Machine Edition. Now let's talk about some of the corrected anomalies. The Datastore Plus ActiveX was deleting all the old CSV files when the system date changed from December 31st, 2016 to January 1st, 2017. That has been fixed. That was a real bummer. Um, runtime applications couldn't be loaded after a recipe load operation by a recipe 2 enhanced ActiveX control. That was also something that is fixed now in version 10. Also, acknowledging or remote acknowledging alarms would change the alarm messages. That's been fixed. And font attributes of alarm list change when created an earlier version of a runtime. So you'd create a runtime in an earlier version, and it would change the font attributes of the alarm list. That also has been addressed. Now, aside from corrected anomalies, there are also a bunch of known anomalies, and you can see this. Again, just go to ab.com, go to product compatibility, click on versions, type in factory talk view machine edition, and you'll be able to download the uh, release notes yourself and look at these. But that's it for version 10. Now, in the coming days, we'll talk about factory talk view site edition, both 9 and 10. And if you find these videos helpful, please give me a like and a thumbs up. And if you have any questions about anything I covered or you want to get my thoughts on something, hit me up over at my free forum, theautomationforums.com. You know, you can also support my work with a $1 monthly pledge over at patreon.com forward slash automation or by taking one of my easy to follow self-paced training courses over at theautomationschool.com. Well, that's it for today's podcast. Until next time, peace.